Hey, we're here with Steve and Luke from Born Ruffians. Thanks for taking the time, guys. Thanks for having us. Uh, Say It came out earlier this week, and we've been listening around uh, the studio, and uh, we like what we hear. Thanks. It's uh, 10 tracks and not a ton of fat. Like, it's, it's a quick, concise record. Even the, four min- the songs that are over four minutes don't feel like they're four minutes. Good. Is that, yeah, that's is that, the goal. Is that the goal? Is that what yeah. you guys thought about? Yeah, you never want anybody to be, like, checking their watch as they're listening to a song. Like, what the... <laughs> um, it was recorded over like two weeks, right, at Metalworks. Mm-hmm. What was that process like to to sit down at Metalworks and you you had Rusty with you again, right, for, mm-hmm. for this record? What, yeah. what was that process like for you guys? Um, it was good. We we didn't we didn't demo anything ahead of time, so we like intentionally went into the studio a bit blind with as far as not really knowing what the songs were going to sound like apart from how we heard them in rehearsals. And actually, usually, in most cases, not knowing how long they were, really, <coughs> we'd sort of time them. But I think I was kind of surprised to find out how many songs we did have that were plus four minutes, you know, when they didn't feel that long. So I'm glad that they don't feel long to you either. But um, yeah, it was good. It was like more time than we had for our last record. Uh, the last one we recorded 14 songs in seven days, so two songs a day. And so that felt really rushed. This one st- still felt like, you know, okay, we have, a, we have a deadline, maybe feeling like you're running out of time a bit, but it was like way more relaxed. Who so. sets that deadline for you guys? Because you're on an indie label, and, and, yeah. and you, you you think that they'd have... Well... Is it just money in the studio? Yeah, it's basically just Finance. a money thing. Yeah. Like how many days can we afford? We right. booked you know, we booked Metalworks, which is kind of a, a renowned Canadian studio, so it's yeah. going to cost you a bit more money than using your friend's garage or whatever. But, right. Um, so, yeah, we I don't know. We figured that was a good amount of time. We got what we wanted out of the studio, and... Uh, most and then the mixing was like an, another whole process, and you, we kind of shaped the record in the mixing as well. But um, yeah, it was good. I mean, the record was really like organically recorded live to tape, pretty much, right. aside from vocals and obvious overdubs. But yeah, you, you hear that too. You hear the energy of a of a live recording as opposed to something that was you know all done in Pro Tools on a computer. So, so yeah, kudos to you guys for for that. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, what to say is the first single, and I was checking out the video. And uh, I wish I was stoned when I was watching the video because it's it's kind of fun the oscilloscope stuff. Yeah. How did how did you guys come across an oscilloscope to to do all that? Um, he's the director, Jared. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, it was his treatment, and he had a a friend uh, who was working on this animation with the oscilloscope. Like the the guy already had samples of YouTube videos animated in into the oscilloscope, so he just kind of took that process that he was working on and, and made the video with it. Is it tough to like, uh, I, and I guess y- you guys aren't animators, so you probably don't know. But even the lips moving and stuff, like it's all it's all in yeah. time or whatever. It's well, great. the thing it's like a pretty tricky. It's it's all in the software. This guy Rob Bayros invented. He wrote the software that that translates the video signal into an audio signal and then allows the oscilloscope to animate it. But it's an instant process. You literally feed black and white video into. Uh, a computer which then translates it and puts it through the oscilloscope and it's just it's instant wow. so I think it was just in the writing of the software that was the time-consuming thing but like the animation is actually an instant thing yeah they like filmed us playing and they had uh, Luke's lips all. oh yeah we had to black him I had to go in blackface <laughs> yeah and so my lips wouldn't stand one of those and, hoods or something yes yeah. <laughs> rob a bank and do a video with an oscilloscope <laughs> yeah. excellent um, horns on comeback um, you guys mess around with horns a lot, and and I don't hear them that much on your stuff, but they appear on Comeback, which is cool because it gives you that that retro feel to like a doo wop feel to that beginning of that track. But yeah, they're um they're sax it was saxophones that we used. They're 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 in a few songs, but that's the one that they actually stood out in most in the in the end. Like mi- when we started mixing the record, we ended up sort of pulling them, either making them a lot more quiet and, and more of a textural. Thing, or just taking them out completely. But we did record saxes on, I think, half of the songs in the studio. But, um, Who plays sax? Uh, these two guys, that they're not in the band. Oh, they're not but in the I, band. I had met them like a couple months previous to recording and asked them to come in for a day and play around with some stuff. And Yeah, I had ideas for a few and then just kind of made up a couple other ones. And Yeah, but these guys, it's, their names are Kyle and Colin. Kyle and Colin. Yeah. I wish I could just like bust out the sax <laughs> yeah. and set and just wail. Be awesome. Yeah. yeah. I was uh, I was checking out your MySpace, and it seems that a lot of Americans are like begging and pleading for you to come to their town. Yeah. Is that, <laughs> is that kind of is that weird that you know you guys are from Toronto, and uh, um, we well we've toured in the states quite a bit. Yeah. We've done 
maybe but this five. this girl was like crying for you to come like begging pleading come to florida <laughs> we get a lot of tears oh because we only did florida once yeah. right we've only been there once and we actually had really good shows so did you hook up with a girl there that you know <laughs> maybe there's like ulterior motives yeah too. <laughs> maybe there's kids in florida that <laughs> you need to pay for or something do, do, yeah. that's why we're avoiding touring back to florida <laughs> Well, uh, Mitch actually, our bass player Mitch, who's not present right now, he yeah. did like a full survey of, of like a personal survey where he just sent out like blogs and bulletins through our you know various social networking sites yeah. and asked people to write in and tell us where they want us to play. And then he literally like logged every single one. Wow. And we did find there were a lot of people in Florida who wanted us to come back and play. It's and we weird. Did, you like, never a, know who, where one. your fans are going to pop up. But where we asked... Where have we fathered children? Yeah. On Twitter. <laughs> yeah, you need to do like, one. retweet if you have a kid by us. There's yeah. like seven kids in Tallahassee alone. <laughs> and weird. Florida came up again. Really? So, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a hotbed of born ruffian children. It's Disney World, man. <laughs> it's Disney World. <laughs> Where you take kids. <laughs> I, I was going to ask about social networking, and, and certainly for a young band, and, and you were rocking an iPhone. Is, is that stuff important for you guys, you think? Aside from making great music, but connecting with your fans and connecting in a way that you know, bands could never connect with their fans before. How, how, how much social media do you guys take part in? Uh, we're pretty inv involved in, in all of those, like, you know, Twitter. And Mitch is the one who kind yeah. of uh, he's king operates network. them. He's That's really, he's on here. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's just, at home he's tweeting until his thumbs bleed. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's genuinely, you know, he's really interested in, in, in doing that and keeping up. And, and he, I think we're aware of how important that that is. Uh, in engaging your fans, keeping them stimulated, and when you're not producing new music, it's a good way for to, ke to keep people coming back to your site and like keeping everyone interested in what you're doing, and it's great. And it, and it also, yeah, it's such an immediate sort of gratification and like immediate feedback. If you ever like, if you want to know something like where do you want us to play, like you can just know right away. Right. It's like yeah, Florida, it's, yeah, Florida, yeah. Tallahassee, <laughs> come see your kids. <laughs> um, what's next for you guys? You're touring the record for a bit. Or yeah. for a long time, probably? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, we're doing a North American tour in June, so coming to a city near you. <laughs> uh, after that, the summertime, we're not really sure, but then we'll be back on the road definitely through September, October, November, doing more. I would imagine because it's three of you and you're all pretty tight and you're probably driving around in a van, there's often a lot of downtime to write and think about stuff and jam on some stuff. Is that is it a continuous process for you guys or not really? No, we have a hard time on the road. The road, yeah. like, the road, <laughs> it's definitely, it's tough. <laughs> there's just no time, we find. Some bands do. We find that it's very, like, your free time is, is usually taken up by trying to, you know, have dinner or right. sleep or spend time with kids or whatever. <laughs> uh, we never, we've never been able to write and sound check or anything. Well, right. that's not entirely true. There are a couple songs that were on this record that maybe developed out of something right. in sound check. Soul Brother and uh, Plinky Plonky, that's not on the record. They definitely were played over the course of sound checks. Maybe parts of the song started before we went on the road, then other parts right. developed in sound check, but it's like really rare. Yeah. But it happens like the odd, odd time. And you get an idea and you jot it down or you yeah, have a riff. Yeah, like Luke will record it really quick and then, but it's, we've never written like full songs or full records on it. Right. There's four of us that tour now. Right. We added a, a fourth member, Andy Lloyd. And what, what does Andy play? Keys, Keys. and uh, guitar and vocals. Cool. Bit of everything. We'll Sax. S we'll see, see them on tour this summer, so, yeah. or this, this spring, so you can check out Andy and his his wares, and then the Born Ruffians and the new record. Thanks so much for taking the time, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having Thanks. us. Cheers.